Saya Rivasvar's story is one of courage, perseverance, and fight. Abused emotionally, physically, and sexually, she went through more in her youth than most people could imagine going through in their lifetime. In 1988, when she was eight and her sister Sarah just six, Ray Wyke, a boyfriend of their mother's, kidnapped the girls. I will never forget him taking us to this nearby wooded area um, where he raped me, where he did it right in front of my sister. He then took the girls deeper into the woods, where he told Rivasvar to say her prayers. And he takes out a knife, and he starts to cut my throat. And all I can do when he stopped was to touch. I looked at my hand, I saw blood, and I dropped down. Rivasvar pretended to be dead, while Wyke then killed her sister Sarah. It wasn't until I heard his car take off that I stood up. And when I stood up, I looked over at my sister and called her name out, and I knew that she wasn't going to answer me back. Unfortunately, I knew that I was going to have to walk out of those woods without her. Rivasvar flagged down a couple on the road. They called 911, and she was rushed to hospital. The tip of the knife narrowly missed her jugular. Doctors later told her it was by the grace of God she's alive. This was one of the worst crimes um, I think in the state of Florida. John Molchan, assistant state attorney, prosecuted the case. With daughters similar in age to Riva Svar and her sister, it hit him especially hard. Uh, you have to be professional and, um, and deal with a, you know, just a horrific, horrific crime. Um, but it all, it affected, you know, the deputies as well as all of us, you know, when none of us will for, ever forget this case. A year after the incident, Riva Svar's family moved to New York. Now she travels the country bringing awareness to the signs of abuse. She's visited Pensacola a few times since the incident, but never to tell her story until now, almost 30 years later. I think it's just kind of, it's all coming back to it. And, uh, and I, I wanna give back to where, you know, it all started. For some, it's hard to come to grips with how she can relive her torturous past over and over again. But for Rivas Farr, it's what makes her who she is today. What I have here are the very shoes that I wore. As for Wyke, he spent 16 years on death row. He died from lung cancer in 2004. And although Rivas Farr's story may have started with Wyke, it's never really been about him. He doesn't deserve to be talked about. You know, Sai is the, the person that, that really uh, is the person that uh, really want to stress uh, a true survivor. Rivas Farr doesn't actually like that term. She prefers fighter, and she wants you to fight too. There's peaks and valleys through everything, and it was difficult at times, and it will be difficult later on. But as long as you continue, continue that fight, you will see the light at the end. Now a mom and an investigator with the New York State Police, Rivasvar says she'll continue telling her story as long as she's helping others overcome their traumas. Thank you very much. Hannah McKenzie, Channel 3 News.